Hello, everyone. Father John Camus here at St. Jean Baptiste on 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. And today we're celebrating the Feast of Easter. So let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So let's prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist today. Let's open our hearts to Christ, truly present and risen, living in our hearts, living in our community, living in the sacraments that we celebrate. So you were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God our Father, by raising Christ your Son, you conquered the power of death and opened for us the way to eternal life. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit that is within us. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today I'm going to read two readings, one from the Acts of the Apostles, and the second is the Gospel reading, the story of the resurrection according to John. Uh, so this, this little section from Acts has to do with Peter proclaiming, Peter giving the good news. Now, really what he's saying is a creed. It sounds like a little bit of an overview, what happened to Jesus, where he went and everything, but really deep down it's a creed. You know, he's telling the story and he's passing it on. This is what we believe. And this is exactly what we do today. We take what we know and we pass it on. And that's the passing on of the creed. So here's Peter. So Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness and forgiveness of their sins through his name. So I think it's, a, it's an important passage. And I think, uh, especially those of us who are older, maybe those of you who have grandchildren, and you hear something like this, he's just giving, you know, everything he says in there, uh, you know, by heart, or you can do, you can say, well, what do you believe? What did Peter say when he gave that first creed, threw it out to the people to listen to? You'd probably come up with almost everything he said. And the idea behind that is, for us today to think about, is passing on the faith. Right? We're celebrating the resurrection today, and we're giving it. We're giving it as a gift to others. We're proclaiming, we're getting all the basics down, we're saying what, everything that Jesus is about, what he did, uh, you know, and we're passing that on. We're passing the story on. And as people hear it, they take it to heart, and the Spirit touches them, and they're transformed. So this is a very important part of our Easter celebration. So now we read the Gospel of John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran 
and she went to get Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and I don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. He saw and he believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Let's just reflect on that scene of Mary again. Let's go back there with her. Let's look at the tomb. Let's truly be present with the, all that imagery. Let that be part of your imagination as I read the reflection today. It was that unique time before dawn, that very still, very quiet darkness. Sometimes it's eerie, sometimes it's awesome. Mary was part of the darkness. Her mind was filled with the images of the cross, the blood, the suffering. Something was so wrong the stone covering the tomb's entrance had been pushed aside. The tomb was open, it was empty. She ran back to the group frantic. They've taken the Lord from the tomb and I don't know where they've put him. John and Peter followed her. They ran, Peter trailed behind. Why did they follow her back to the tomb? Jesus had been plotted against and killed. They were his followers. They knew there were plots against them. And they were hiding in a tomb of their own. But there was something compelling in Mary's frightened declaration. They left their tomb and followed Mary to his. John and Simon Peter ran together for a bit, but John was so much younger, he quickly moved ahead. He was already peering into the tomb when Simon Peter arrived. Out of deference, he didn't enter. Simon Peter squatted down and entered. Like a detective, he studied what little was in there. The tiny room was just big enough to fit in. The bed-like shelf where the body had laid was clear, except for the shroud and the two linen bands that had bound Jesus' hands and feet. They were folded up at one end of the shelf. The cloth that had covered his head was rolled up at the opposite end. There were no signs of pilfering here no signs of desecration. Whatever happened here was methodical and peaceful. Peter put his hand to his mouth and wondered. John came in behind him. Something happened to John the second he entered. He felt he had entered a sacred chamber. Tears welled up in his eyes Something happened here, something beyond logic. The old man and the young man stood together in silence. They left the tomb and returned to the city in silence. Mary remained behind, weeping as she stood before the empty tomb. This is the story we tell today. 
we have to wait another seven days before we hear the other things that happened that day, that Easter Sunday. Why are we made to wait? We need time to discern who we are. Are we merry, overwhelmed by the darkness that never seems to go away? Are we Simon Peter, still not sure about it all? Or are we John, seeing heaven for the first time? We need time to realize that the dawn has come. We need time to believe in the impossible. We need time to see a new heaven and a new earth. I think on Easter Sunday, our intentions, our prayers of the faithful are maybe especially important because what we need to do is look at the light and look at the darkness. There's a great deal of darkness in our world right now. We have events that have just recently taken place that are so difficult. The bombing of the, the concert hall in Moscow, uh, the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore, the horrors going on in the Middle East, uh, the horrors going on in Eastern Europe, other places. Uh, we could just keep going, putting the focus on all the places where the darkness seems to be reigning. Part of our experience as Christians is to look at that darkness. So we think of all those people suffering the darkness, we unite with them in our prayer and we pray for them. We also look to the light. We look to all those who were baptized last night at the Easter Vigil, those who were confirmed into the Catholic faith. We look at all that newness of life in them. They are the John in the story that we read today. They're the newly baptized. They're the ones who are seeing the world with different eyes today. They look beyond the darkness and they see light in their hearts. So we lift them up in our prayers too. And we think of our families and friends, maybe people we're visiting today. We think of their struggles, their darkness, their light. And we lift them up in our prayers too. We lift up our church here, St. Jean's, but the church throughout the world. We pray that that light of Christ may touch many people during this Easter season, and that that light may become a powerful energy within them, and not to be kept in their own hearts, but really to be shared, to pour out that light into our world, to not be afraid to speak the truth, to give homage to the light, to condemn the darkness, to call it what it is. So we pray for courage for all Christians today. Let's pause for a moment. Let's call to mind whatever personal intentions we have in our hearts. So Father in heaven, we ask you to bless each one of us on this Easter Sunday. Fill us with the light that you've poured into the world through your resurrection. Help us to celebrate you in our lives and to share you, share the good news of your presence in our world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands 
the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. So Lord, with Easter joy, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended he took the cup again he gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to his disciples and said take this all of you and drink from it for well, this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. 
May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Father of love, watch over your church and bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised by this Easter sacrament. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And we bow on our heads and we pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter. And may God protect you against all evil. Amen. Through the resurrection of his son, God has granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. We have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So have a good day, everyone. Enjoy your Easter celebration, especially if you're meeting with friends or relatives. It'd be a very good time for you, a time of joy and happiness. So have a good Easter. <laughs>